Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Sorvestian coming to you with my first video in my series on how I play premium ships. And this video is about how I play the Atlanta. The Atlanta is a tier 7 premium cruiser and a popular choice for newcomers to the game. The Atlanta is what I call a fragile DPS monster and what I consider to be a support ship. It's not really well suited as a frontline attacker like many other cruisers of similar tiers. And that's where I see people struggling with the Atlanta. I see a lot of people treating the Atlanta like other cruisers, pushing up or engaging targets on their own, and I see them die very quickly. So the point of this video is to showcase how I think the Atlanta is best played. Before I get into the replays, let's cover what strengths and weaknesses the Atlanta has. Her strengths include a very high rate of fire, 13.3 rounds per minute with commander skills. Lots of quick turning guns, the best concealment with a surface detectability of only 11 kilometers, the smallest turning radius of all the tier 7 cruisers, a very good rudder shift time, torpedoes, and great anti-air defense, including unlimited usage of the defensive AA fire consumable. Her weaknesses include the shortest gun range for her tier, 13.3 kilometers with commander skills, with the smallest guns of all the tier 7 cruisers. 127 mm compared to the 203 mm guns on the Pensacola and the Miyoko, or the 210 mm guns on the York, which are easily incapacitated and fire the shells in a very high arc, giving them a very long travel time compared to other ships. She also has very weak armor, low hit points, and a large citadel area. Because of this large citadel area, the Atlanta frequently suffers full damage from enemy shells, especially when she is exposing her broadside to the enemy. Her citadel begins just behind her three forward guns and extends all the way back to the start of her aft guns. So this whole area here is her citadel. And her torps only have a range of 4.5 kilometers. So what does all this mean? Well, it means the Atlanta is very good at going after destroyers, where she can use her high rate of fire to kill them quickly, and defend larger ships like battleships that are vulnerable to destroyers. It also means that she is great at providing anti-air protection for larger allied ships. And lastly, it means that she can use her concealment to get in a bit closer with her fleet before being detected, and help soften up larger targets for allied battleships and heavy cruisers, while using her great maneuverability to avoid incoming shells. However, it also means the Atlanta will die very quickly if she becomes the focus of attention. And because she lacks a smoke screen and has the profile of a cruiser, she lacks the ability to run away like destroyers, meaning that once she gets focused, she will probably get sunk. So this means you probably don't want to be the first ship to get spotted by the enemy team nor do you want to be taking on larger ships alone or facing situations where you are outnumbered. What you want to do is stick close to your fleet, hunt down destroyers that pose an imminent threat to your battleships, cover them with anti-air and support your fleet as it pushes forward, and situationally support your destroyers in capping different points. I use the term situationally because doing this usually forces the Atlanta to sail too far ahead of the main fleet to really receive any protection from allied ships. So I have my Atlanta set up to make her better in these roles. For consumables I use defensive AA fire because I think it's more useful and has more opportunities for usage than hydroacoustic search. For upgrades, I use Main Battery Modification 1 to reduce the chance of a magazine detonation and to repair my guns faster. I use AA Guns Modification 2 to increase my AA power. I use Propulsion Modification 1 to reduce the risk of becoming immobilized. And I use Steering Gears Modification 2 to increase my maneuverability. For commander skills, I use basic firing training to decrease the reload time of my guns and increase my AA power. I use situational awareness to tell when I can expect incoming fire and to detect when I'm spotted by a destroyer I cannot see. 
I use fire prevention to increase my survivability. I don't think expert marksman is necessary because the Atlantis guns turn pretty quickly already. I use high alert because the damage control party consumable is never back up fast enough for this ship. I use advanced firing training to increase the range of my main guns and make my AA stronger. I would also consider getting demolition expert because it's almost doubles the fire chance. I'm probably going to get preventative maintenance because it'll reduce the chance of my guns getting knocked out. But I am also considering getting concealment expert. So this is the first replay I wanted to show you, and it's a great example of how not to play the Atlanta. And that's exactly what everyone on my team is doing. Because there's nothing else to really shoot at, and this Atlanta is an easy kill. If you look at the minimap, you can see he's really far ahead of his team. And what he's trying to do is support an allied destroyer just in front of him, that you'll see pop up on the minimap soon. But just look what is happening. He got sunk in about 40 seconds. This next replay is also a great example of how not to play the Atlanta. Here I am in a New Orleans, and just behind the island to my left is an Atlanta, and I'm about to go say hello. Now, his position isn't actually all that bad, as the island is providing great cover from the ships on my team. But the problem for the Atlanta is that if he stays there, I'm eventually going to come around the island and he'll be a sitting duck for my 9 203mm guns. So as you can see, he has started moving out from behind the cover of the island to engage me. But he comes out with his broad side facing me. And I just rip him apart with three citadels, taking away just over half his health in just one salvo. Now he quickly begins to turn away and light me up with his high rate of fire. But as you can see, even though he is landing a lot of hits, his 127mm guns just aren't doing that much damage. So while he continues to whittle down my health, each time he presents me his broadside, he continues to lose large chunks of his health because the armor on the Atlanta is like paper and is doing nothing to stop my 203mm armor piercing shells from tearing through his hull. Now he is going to die here because he's trying to make his ship do something it's not designed to do. He's trying to take on a more powerful ship alone. What he should have done was back up and call me out as a priority target for his teammates, presenting me the smallest profile possible by using only his forward guns and softening me up while his two ally battleships focused me down. This last battle is of me playing my Atlanta. I start off by moving up to support my two allied destroyers as they go to capture A. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, there are no carriers in this battle, so there will be no need for me to provide anti-air cover. But my role continues to be the same. My job is to escort my fleet while removing destroyer threats and providing support. Now, you're going to see that I don't charge into A right away. I want to keep some distance and not become the focus of attention. The start of the battle is the most dangerous time of the battle. There are more ships and a higher chance of getting focused by multiple enemy ships. So I think it's a good strategy to play the Atlanta a bit more cautiously at the beginning of the battle and become more aggressive as the battle goes on. And that's when I notice another enemy destroyer heading towards B. So with our push into A going well, I make the destroyer heading towards B my priority and continue to support A for as long as I can.
Now at this point, I was worried that the destroyer might try to slip through this gap and go for our two battleships. But instead he went into B and I decided to harass the enemy ships in B to give my team more of a lead. With one of the destroyers capping be destroyed and more allied ships moving in, I decided to circle back and escort our battleships. Remember that the Atlanta does better in groups than off alone. She's a support ship, so sticking close to my fleet is a better strategy. And if there had been carriers in this battle, then I would be able to cover my battleships with my strong AA. So we just kept A and B giving us a lead. And now we have to keep it from the enemy team that is going to be pushing in from C. Now this is exactly where you want to be in the Atlanta. Behind your allied destroyers and attack cruisers. And just in front of your battleships lending support fire. I keep my bow to the enemy and just use my forward guns. Because if I turn broadside to fire all of my guns there's a very high chance that that Congo off in the distance will citadel me. So I continue to soften up this Congo and try to light as many fires as I can to help my battleships kill him quicker. So what if your team isn't pushing up and is playing very defensively? Well that puts you in a difficult position since you don't have the range to really sit back with them but you also don't have the survivability to lead the charge so to speak. So I would wait and look for another opportunity or encourage them to start pushing up with you. And the Congo goes down pretty fast. Now, I thought my battleships would continue to push down the one and two lines. So I continued to move forward. However, it at this point that we all notice the enemy team pushing in from C and that we are about to lose B. So my battleships start turning to go down the strait I just passed. But I see that there is at least two more enemy destroyers still afloat and one of them is heading towards B. So I decide to go around the island to my left and head back to support my battleships while continuing to soften up the Aalba in front of me. Now, for the two allied battleships heading to defend B, going in alone against two cruisers and a destroyer in a confined area is very dangerous because it limits the battleship's maneuverability and gives the enemy destroyer a much better chance of landing more of his torpedoes. Now you can see the allied battleship turning into B because he now has the confidence that I will cover and hunt down the destroyer for him. Now I can't see the enemy destroyer so I try to put down as much support fire as I can on the mermask in front of me. Again I do not show my broadside even to a mermask or another Atlanta. And then I spot the enemy destroyer, who is popping a smoke, and even though my guns rotate really quickly, I'm not able to hit him before he disappears. So I go back to focusing the Atlanta, who is now going broadside to my battleships, and probably trying to torp me. However, he loses most of his hit points in one salvo from an allied battleship, and dies pretty quickly. But again, because I did not show him my broadside and I minimized my profile, he wasn't able to do a whole lot of damage to me. And shortly after, the destroyer gets detected and I'm still alive to lay down suppressing fire and incapacitate some modules before our battleships uh, deal the finishing blow. And I start capping B. 
My steering got knocked out, but since there are no enemy ships around, it's not a big deal and I can wait. And then, just as everything seems quiet, a full health enemy Omaha comes around the island and I start to panic because he can do a lot of damage to me. But then I see him take a huge hit from one of my allied battleships, so I pour on the HE fire and try to take him out. But I lose him. And then he pops back in. And... I get the kill. So, overall not bad. 250,000 credits, 5,900 experience and second on my team. So overall, I think the Atlanta is a really good ship that can net you a lot of credits and free experience. The credits come mostly from the insane number of hits you can get in one battle. But in order to get those hits, you need to stay alive. And the longer you can stay alive, the more hits you can get. But if you play her very aggressively and go off on your own, I think you'll find this ship very frustrating, because you'll die very quickly. And I don't think just using the terrain to get in close is enough to really succeed in this ship. There is just too many situations where you have to expose your ship in order to fire your guns. And if you are the focus of attention, you will just take tons of damage. And there are maps like Ocean, where there is just no cover at all. But I think if you follow the suggestions in this video, you will do fairly well in the Atlanta. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it makes the Atlanta more enjoyable for you to play. Please click like if you liked the video, and subscribe to my channel for more videos about World of Warships.